Hello everyone and welcome back to day 28 of 100 days of code. So everyone's been waiting for it and it's finally here. We are going to be creating a blog in Vue.js and Node.js. We'll also be using a bunch of dependencies and that going along with that to make our journey easier. Um, and I will explain it all along the way. To start off though, I want to say thank you for everyone who tuned into the stream yesterday, day 27, because that was absolutely amazing. We had, I think, 1.50 people in there at once. That was insane, so thank you for that. It's it's so amazing that everyone is joining and getting involved, and I'm happy you all enjoyed it too. Everyone who stayed to the end, all your feedback and that was absolutely amazing. So yes, yeah, so we've already built this website, so there's the website we've built, and I haven't, as you can see, I've got it here, the blog. <laughs> There's nothing on it yet, but I'm going to design this up tonight. But the reason I haven't designed it yet is because we are working on the back end of the system first. So we're going to work on the node side and then creating all the, the API for this uh, service for the, for the blog. So that is what we're going to do first. We're going to be using Postman and a few other tools to... Um, to build this site to help us build the API and then we'll crack on. So for now we don't need XD open. We can close this down and we can swap over to my window. So I'm gonna go through everything what we're gonna need and use in this. So first things first, you need a text editor. Um, my preferred weapon of choice is Visual Studio Code. As you've all seen in my previous video, I've used it many times so you can see all the benefits from there. Again, you could just come to codes.visualstudio.com to actually download it. I download the stable version. I did used to use the uh, Insiders, which is basically like the beta release where you get loads of different releases and updates quicker. And I'm also now going to go through the extensions I am using in this tutorial. So as you can see here, we have the the Atom key map, which is because I came from Atom and I'm used, I was used to that key map and I use the Atom key map and I, I prefer it to be honest, I don't like using control to do everything. I prefer using commands and that is where the Atom key map excels. Um, or, and instead of using like alt and stuff, I just prefer command just feels easier to me because I've been using it for so long. Another thing we'll be using is the bracket pair colorizer 2. And as you can see here, white does highlight your uh, indented brackets or your brackets and the brackets and stuff in different colors so you know which ones are linking to what. And if you click it, it adds this lovely line to show you where the code block is, what is inside this code block. So that is very useful to use. Uh, I have Git Lens installed, but we won't be using that again. That's just for your Git and like re repositories and stuff. Uh, I am using the Material Theme, so the Google Material Theme. Actually, this one isn't even by Google, but material theme is normally a Google thing. So that is, that's the theme I'm using. And I'm also using the material icon theme. So as you can see, all these icons come with it and it's very useful. Next up, I'm using NPM and NPM IntelliSense. So what this does is it helps you build, like in your package object, JSON, you could just type in com and then you can write, and it'll probably autofill commander and what version's the latest version for you or also, or it will do the latest version you can pick from. So that is useful and there's a bit of a, a few other things in there. But then NPM IntelliSense, IntelliSense, I hope I didn't butcher that name. But as you can see from here, you, it basically is like an auto feel like an auto populate, uh, auto complete for your modules. And that helps a lot. So that's really good. Rainbow CSV, we don't need it. But if you ever work with CSV files, this is absolutely useful. Absolutely amazing, very useful. We've got SAS installed. Um, we're not going to be using SAS again, but this is enough for one. Sync settings is basically so uh, my settings are the same for my Mac at work and my Mac at home. Uh, and future, so this is one we will be using in the next video when we start the few section of this uh, tutorial. And what this is, is it, it has loads of different things, like as you can see the feature list here, and it's very useful. So definitely download that for when you're working on few. Um, and that is VS Code, so that one could be closed. Next up, we need Node.js, and I have the, I think I have 10.13 installed, maybe a bit less than this, but that's fine for me. This, it'll be the same between 10 and 10.15, except from tiny details, what we probably won't need. So yeah, I, I click download on this. It brings open a 
um, installation thing. You follow through with the installation and it installs it for you. It also installs NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, which is used to install dependencies for Node. Next up, we do need Mongo. Well, I will be using MongoDB. You can use your database of choice, but to follow along fully with the tutorial, you will need to be using MongoDB. I use Homebrew to install uh, MongoDB and as you can see here so if you want to find this uh, this tutorial here how to install it onto your Mac um, find this just I t literally typed in Google homebrew MongoDB and this was the first result so you could either do that or you could put in this URL right here and you just run you just install it and it will do everything for you you follow this little tutorial it tells you what to do here um, what to create so you have to create a data.db file now and then that's all good and then you'll be able to run if you run it as surface you'll be able to run mongo and as you can see i can use mongodb here and there's a few things we've done in the past like the image manager and the chat that is uh, mongodb the last thing we need is postman and postman is uh well it allows you to test your api really easily it makes it so much quicker and you understand so you can just if i just hit product and then hit postman i believe get postman yeah there you go. download the app you can download the app it looks like this and i'll show you it show it off once we actually get around to it okay guys so let's get into this so we need to set up a folder okay so once we're in here we can then run mp oh first we can run code dot and this will open it up in vs code i can close this one here don't save but yep, so that opens it up in there. So next up, we can type in there npm init, and this will start us a new, well, a new pack. This creates a package.json file, and in here we're going to write, I'm going to write blog, uh, as simple as that. Oh, yes, I'm going to write blog, as uh, simple for Node, version 1.0 description, a uh, simple node.js plus view.js blog, uh, and this will be surfer.js, because we'll be, it's basically the surfer, the API. Uh, we'll carry on. Git repository doesn't need one. Uh, keywords, uh, wrong thing. Author will be my name. Uh, you can write your own name here if you want to. Um, license, uh, I, ICS is fine. ISC, sorry. ISC, yeah, that's right. And now it's good. So now we have this package.json file. So if we go in here, so when we go into the package.json file, you can see we have all that stuff here. Uh, we do not need this um, test, so we're just going to remove the stuff from scripts for now. But now back in our terminal, we need to download a few dependencies. So we're going to send npm i, and we're going to say express. We also need mongoose. Um, so for now, we just need express and mongoose, I believe, um, and potentially a couple of others, but we'll go, we'll use those when we get to that point. So for now, we're going to hit um, enter and I'm going to wait for this to do. Uh, okay, guys, so those have installed. We now need to install a development dependency. So we're going to say I hyphen capital D and then we're going to say Nodemon. And this is going to install a def dependency of Nodemon, which will run our node server for us in development mode. Okay, that is installed. And if we go back to our package.json file, as you can see, we have a def dependency with Nodemon in there and an express. Now in scripts, because we have, we can now put in here def, which is the keyword to run the script. That's the script we can run. And in here, we'll put def and we're going to say node monks. We'll be referencing this def dependency and we're going to say surfer.js. So it's going to run node mon on our surfer.js. Uh, uh, so that is good for us. Next up, we want to create a surfer.js file. And in there, we're going to create, we're going to, you, we're going to require a few things. First, it's going to be express. So we're going to say const express equal to require express, as you see. That auto populated uh, const um, app, or sorry, con yeah, no, const uh, app or mongoose. Mongoose equal to require mongoose. And then further down, we will write const app is equal to express. So we'll start a new express app. And down here, we've got to create a bit of middleware. We've got to add a bit of middleware for our Node.js. Um, so the first thing is we're going to go app.use and we're going to say express.json. 
So before we used to have to use body parser to do this, but now JSON, uh, sorry, not JSON. Now Express has these built in, so you can now use express.json to pass JSON, as you read there, um, and it's based on body parser. So it basically has body parser already installed. So if now we go app.use express.url encoded, that is also, so if we have throw for that, that tells you what that is, which is the same as body parser, helps you handle uh, form data. Okay, so now we've got the little middleware uh, set up. We also want to um, start our surfer. Uh, start surfer, we're just going to write that there. Um, and down here we're going to say app.listen, and we're going to pass in a port, which is going to be 3000 for now. Um, and a callback which is going to be equal to error and we're going to say if error um, console.error error um, and we're going to quickly change our tabs from spaces uh, convert indentations to tabs there we go so now we're using tabs and then we're going to say log and we're going to write in here um, Surfer has started on port, port, and we're going to put dollar s, and we're going to put in here three thousand, uh, so, oh, three thousand, or process dot nth dot port, and we're also going to put this exact code where the three thousand is. What this says is if well, we should do this the other way around. Sorry. So if this doesn't return, if this returns null or undefined or empty, this will then use the three thousand. Else it will use, um, else it will use whatever port is inside of there. And then in here, this dollar s will tell us what port that is, or it will tell us three thousand. Um, also, we want to go down here and we want to say app dot get. And if we say slash, we're going to say regress, and we're going to say uh, rest.send hello world just so that's there and we can test that out okay so first thing first we need to start our surface so in our terminal we're going to say uh, npm start def which is the script we created and if we run that uh, body parts are depreciate undefined extended provide extended option surfer surfer has started on port 3000 extended option Ah, so in here we just want to write extended tree. And now this should, on save, automatically reload. It doesn't look like it has reloaded though. Oh, that's writing node. If we go back to our package, guys, we actually had to run npm run def. So this whole time we were putting start, which was starting it, and we were running in def mode, but we weren't running npm start def, so that is how we fix that issue. My bad, I was running the wrong command. So now we have surface started on port 3000. Um, and now if we go in here and we say localhost 3000, we get hello world, so what we sent through. So that is now both are working perfectly fine. Um, so let's create our... Um, API routes and down here we're going to say app so what is the first route? we want to create a, a blog post right so we want to go app dot um, post and we're going to say in here forward slash API forward slash create or forward, forward slash post forward slash create so we want to create a new post um, or should we put new that make more sense post new yeah and in our handle list we're going to say uh, we we'll get go straight to a callback and we're gonna say rec and res and we're gonna do that in here we could split up our files but I feel for this tutorial uh, putting it in here is perfectly fine and acceptable um, oh Okay, guys. So we need to set up our mongoose, um, our Mongo connection. So we just want to go in here, mongoose.connect, and in here we're going to pass a URL, which will be mongodb 
slash slash local host 27017 which is a default port and then we're going to pass through the name of the um, database which is going to be called blog okay so once we have react connect we need to type in mongoose.connection.on connected I believe it's connected or connect or connection and we're gonna we'll find out in a second we're gonna pass a a function we're gonna throw part through an error function we're gonna pass in the error and we're just gonna throw error if there is an error and then we're gonna log um surfer has or oh no connected to database So let's check our console and here it says surfer has started on port 3000 connected to database. Oh god this is so annoying it always does this. Um, we're going to part up here we're going to pass through this which basically gets rid of our deprecation warning um, because not using use new URL parser is a sin apparently to Mongo. Okay, so these sort of basics what we've got set down. We can remove this forward slash here. We don't need that no more. We just need the API routes. And the first one is new. And the first one we're going to do is log rec.body. And we are going to now load up Postman to test what happens when we create a log to, um, well, to this route. So now if we go here and we type in Postman, we shall... Oh, it's loaded on the wrong screen. Once I, when it has fully loaded, I will move it up to the correct screen. Okay, guys, so now we are inside of Postman. Once it opens, you'll see you'll be greeted with this screen, and we can put in here post and we can say HTTP forward slash forward slash local host uh, colon 3000 forward slash API slash post slash new. And now in here we can pass through some headers and in our headers we'll say con content type and in the value we're going to say application forward slash json just so we send across to the server telling us it's, a, it's going to be json content. And now inside of um, body we are going to go to raw and we are going to write um, what you need for a new, a new post. So you will need a title post title oh hello um, we will need content which will be post content oh hello what did I do there post content I'm also going to wrap these in um, quotation marks and then also author which will be my oh my name now let's say, uh, oh, we don't need to save this. So now let's test this. Let's hit send. And nothing happens. But if we go over to our surfer, our terminal, as you can see, sorry, the background is quite bright. Um, as you can see, it posted what we sent through. Um, but we don't send anything back. So now we can go res.send and we can just send back the rec.body. So we're literally just sending back the same data they send us. No reason to do that, but if we hit send, there we go. We get the content straight back, um, and it lo it logs it in the thing. So now we can use that information. So we can say in here rec.body.title, and if we go back to this and we hit send, as you see, we get post title, which is the title of the um content we just sent through so it's pretty simple as that so now we've got that that stuff we can now use that stuff but we want to save that into a collection in our um, our database but we need to do that we need to create a up here we're going to create a a new schema slash uh, model so to start off with we want to say const uh, post schema is equal to mongoose dot schema and it's just going to pass an object through here and we're going to say title and in here we're going to we're going to put in an, some brackets and we're going to say type is equal to string unique 
is equal to false and that is well we don't need I, I want to show off unique in that but we don't actually need it so we can actually just remove it and because there's only one uh, one value we can just use string like so um, and then in here we're going to pass through we're also going to pass through the content which is also going to be a string and the author once again a string we're also going to oh hello we're also going to save a timestamp which is going to be a number I believe or should we save it as a string I think we're going to save it as a string because I don't want it cutting out any zeros at the start if there is any and now we'll inside of our app.post we're going to go um, uh, we're going to create a payload so we'll say let payload equal and we're going to say title is equal to rec.body.title uh, content is equal content is equal to rec.body.content and finally in for the content we're being passed through we want to say author uh, is equal to rec.body.author and I've also realized we don't need to create a payload, we need to create a a new to do with the new schema. Um, we'll leave it like this for now, but yeah, we also want to go in here and say timestamp is equal to new date dot time dot get time. And then we want to times that by a thousand. Times it, oh, times it by a thousand makes it um, correct, I believe. If we leave it without being times by a thousand, it is incorrect. Uh, but yes, next up we need to create a model for our schema. And we're going to say post model is equal to mongoose.model. And in here we're going to pass through a model name, which is going to be post. And as a second parameter, we're going to pass through the post schema. So what we create here. And that is how we do the post model. And now in our API view, we want to go new post. Oh, wait, sorry. Let new post equal uh, a new post model. And then we pass through the payload. And then we now we can say new post dot save. And we can say, uh, and that is all we need to do. Uh, we can also catch an error and stuff, but for now, save will be fine. And then we can just say log. Per Actually, you know, we will do it in a callback. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say error or result. And we're going to say if error, we're going to say rest.send. Message and we're going to say error and we're also going to say success is equal to false just so simple you'd send through and if there's no error we're going to say rest.send and we're just going to send the result back actually we're going to send two things we're going to say success is equal to true and the result is equal to result so now if we go back to here and we hit send, we then get a success of true and result. And in our result, we get back an ID, which the database creates for us, uh, the post title, the content, and as you can see, the timestamp, but that looks way too big. I think <coughs> times it by a thousand may have broken it. Uh, where is it? Epoch confer, that'll do. And if we put in a type here, yeah. what's that going to say? Monday, Mar you know what? It still works, but I don't think we need to times it by a thousand. I'm pretty sure if we go back to Postman now and we change post title to two content to author still me and we hit send and we grab this value here, it also get there. Yeah, that's a much better, neater time. That is fine there. 
we don't need to times by a thousand. Okay, okay. So now we have um, sorted out how this works. We now know we can create new posts, but how do we know if they've actually saved? So inside of our terminal, we can type in Mongo to use the Mongo CLI, and we will type in here, show DBs, and actually the, the blog. So now we will say use blog. And now we will say db dot collection, which would be so now we can go show collections and it shows posts. So we can say db dot post dot find and we can just type that. And as you can see, we have two values in it. The two values did, the two entries we added. We can also do here dot pretty and this will make it look neater so we can see it. So we've got post title and then post title two in there with both their object IDs, which we will pass back in the result. We can now exit this and go back to, we clear this and we can go back to running the dev server, the, the actual server. Um, so that is, that is the basics of the adding one. So now let's do an app.get and we're going to say forward slash API forward slash posts. And this, what this is going to do is get our um, posts for us. And I think we're going to have and select a forward slash all on the end of that so we know we're getting all of them. So we only want to, we want to return all our posts. In the future, we can add in some query parameters what filter down the post. We can say get by author. So we can say get by author and pass through Tyler Potts or an author ID if we created some author IDs and stuff, which would be awesome. Um, but for now, we're going to stick to the basics and we're just going to get all. And in here, we're going to say post model dot find and then we're going to pass in here error and result oh. and now we're just going to go in here and we'll say if error rest dot send success false and message error or result error um, message error um, that looks good and now under here we're going to say rest.send and we're going to pass through success and we're also going to say true and result is equal to result now if we save that now this one should just work um, Straight, straight away so if we go into our postman and we create a new route and we just copy this route quick hello oh this route quickly and it is a get request so get is fine and now oh no and now we want to change new to all po posts as well api posts all and we're gonna say in headers body I don't think we don't have to say anything. We can just click send here, and there we go. We get our results. Our result is an array of all our posts. So if we go back here and we create a new post and we say we send through title off um, completed 100 days of code, um, put a hashtag in there so we know that's cool, and then we'll say we finally completed. our hashtag 100 days of code video series uh, obviously we haven't but you know that would be nice so now if we hit send and we've sent that so that's worked and now we go back to get and we hit send to that as you see we get that new one in there too so we can get all the posts that way so now that's good for our API we also need app dot oh hello app dot post and this one it's going to be called API forward slash post forward slash update. And in this one, we're going to pass through a few. So we're going to say rest and we're going to now say, so what we need to do is in our body, we're going to say let ID equal rec.body.id because we're going to be passing back an ID. Uh, and then we're going to go post model dot find by ID um, or is it find by ID and update? And we're going to put in here 
the ID and then we're going to pass through the update so we're going to say let payload equal to rec dot body dot we'll pass it through in two things so we're going to say body and we're going to call this one the update um, and so we're going to just type in here payload and then in here we're going to have a callback function which is going to get error and the result if any and in here we're just going to say if error res dot send and again we're going to say success equal to false because it's an error and the message will pass through the message error and then we're going to say res dot send uh, success uh, true and the result is equal to result and basically what this does is it will find our ID it will then go from our ID to our body actually I think we can just pass through rec dot body because the ID should be fine and we'll put underscore ID because that's how it's going to come through um, and that is how that should work if I'm correct that should be fine um, so if we go back to our postman and we create a new route and it is a post recruit and we're gonna we're gonna copy this one here paste that link in and we're gonna say update and in here we're gonna say headers and we're gonna do the same as we did before it's gonna be content type so we're letting it know that we are sending through uh, JSON and then in the body we're gonna say raw and we're going to cheat quickly, we're going to grab this post here. Actually, we're going to grab post one, the original post we created, and we're going to paste this in. Uh, can we use those? No. And we're only going to pass back a few things. So we're not going to pass back the timestamp. We are just going to pass back the ID, the post title, the post content, and the author. And inside of title, we're gonna say we're gonna add one and we're gonna say post content one. So that is gonna be the update. Now we don't need that last uh, comma. And now if we hit send, we got success of true and it's passed back the same the same file which we had. But now if we go to all and we hit send, we get back our updated contents, and that means the the it, it has worked and it's now post content. Just to make that a bit more clear, we're going to go in here and we're going to change this to the very first post, and then we hit send, and now we go back to get all, and we hit send, we get the very first post. So you can see it, it's being updated. Now we have one more thing we need inside of our inside of our blog post system we need to go app dot um, post and this is going to be api forward for slash oh hello api slash post forward slash remove and this is going to delete a post if we need to so we're going to say rec dot res um, and we're going to say let id equal rec dot body dot id or underscore id no we'll pass it for as underscore id after we've got the id we need to go post model dot find by id and we're going to pass in the id and then we'll say dot remove and then we're just going to say error or we're going to go error result and we're going to say if error rest.send success false and then message gonna be equal to error and then we'll, if it does if it successfully does we're gonna say rest.send and we're gonna say result result that should be a result there um oh no we're not we're gonna pass in success true and result is equal to result so now if we go back to our um, our postman and we put in here and we change that to a post and we say remove we can then go to our headers and set our content type which is going to be equal to 
application slash JSON. And in our body, we can hit raw. And all we need, to, oh, all we need to do is pass through an ID, and we're going to get that ID from our all. And which one we're going to? We're going to remove the second post, and we'll pass through this ID. And now, if we hit send, it says here success true result n and ok one so this moves it it found one and it removed one i believe i'm not 100 sure so don't quote me on that <laughs> so now if we go back here and we check for so remember we we got rid of post two so if we hit send we only have two posts the very first post and the complete post if we try to send this again and we hit send we get a success of true n0 ok1 what this means is it didn't find anything to remove so nothing got removed that's all it says it says zero files um, changed um, and it, the reason it doesn't throw an error is because it's not an error it's just not found anything um, if there was an error it would be something like um, nothing was passed through or there was something completely different or something gone wrong with internally um, and these are the basics what you need for a blog post. Um, we do need an image and stuff like that. Um, and we could set that up. But we will do that when we get around to doing the Vue.js stuff. We'll get into images and all that stuff and adding them to the surfer and stuff. For now, this is a very basic blog API. Um, so this is the Node.js side of the blog. We'll also be creating an admin system for this blog post, uh, for this blog system. Um, a front end system what displays it and also a um, a manager that manages images and stuff of course um, all stuff we've done in previous tutorials but this one will be going in depth of combining it all together um, so for now guys this is this is um, what we've got to so far we've created a system where we have four different crud functions so crud functionality we have the create we have the remove we have well crud we have the read we have the update and we have to remove oh hello don't don't delete that um, and that is that is all we needed for this tutorial for this first part in the second part we're going to be working on the front end few systems so we're going to be working on getting the blog posts we add in um, and we're going to be updating them in the back end uh, we're going to be adding new ones in the back end and we're going to be displaying them on the front end, sorry. Um, so hopefully that is interesting and I hope you guys found this uh, little piece interesting. So we went through how to do mongoose schemas, from mongoose schemas to node, basic node stuff. And we used the new express JSON and express URL encoded and set using body parser. Although they do are the same thing, we did need to import a second package for that. So for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more, then subscribe. And as always, leave some feedback in the comments. Another thing is we do have a community Discord server, so don't forget to go check that out. The link is in the description. Everybody is invited. And everybody is welcome to join our server. It's a re it's really fun server. We get we we meet up with new developers all the time. New people join, and we get we get involved and we also talk about loads of fun stuff like regex today one of the topics was regex and i think one of our uh, members scared off another person by pasting in a really long regex code but we won't talk about that it was really good experience for the person that's all we're saying <laughs> um, and also just so i can plug in one more thing if you haven't already go follow my twitter because i give updates on what's happening throughout my day and if these these videos are going to be early or late or on time if these video well they'll never be early because i always try to schedule them for a certain time but if they're going to be late i will let you know on twitter first thing and in the discord server so thank you guys for watching and peace out